This week has led many Americans to consider issues of race with a fresh urgency, but coming to grips with our own attitudes can be a challenge. It's one addressed in a groundbreaking book and in the workshops it is now inspired. Together, they've helped thousands of people look deep into themselves as they look to change the world around them. Across this nation, outrage wears many colors. My sign says white silence equals white violence because white people are the people oppressing black people. This show of recognition that racism is real has taken on renewed life in white people. From protests in the past, the marches, the freedom rides, the size and number of people of all races on the street has grown. An extension from the unrest in the streets of Ferguson, Missouri in 2014, after Michael Brown was gunned down by a white police officer. If these were our white sons being stopped like this, that, that would not be tolerated. That's when we first discovered a small bi-monthly support group inside the St. Louis YWCA. The whole region has a race problem. It was called Witnessing Whiteness, and in true AA fashion, they acknowledge who they are and who they seek to be. I think by having a group that's just white, we can ask the, what people may consider the dumb questions. Questions about bias through history, white privilege, and systemic racism. And five years later, they're still at it. It has grown. Um, I think when you came to see us, we were on our first sort of upward swing. We caught up with them to get their thoughts on what they've learned and reaction to what's happening now. Mary Ferguson was a group facilitator in 2014. We don't have to know exactly the right thing to do. We just have to resist what are some of the things that we know are wrong to do. Um, we have to change our mindsets and our behavior. Bill Gilbert has been witnessing whiteness since 2011. You look at from Michael Brown to George Floyd, what lens are you seeing this through, having done this work? That's a, that's a good question. Not a whole lot has changed, actually. I've been through many classes, many programs, and I learn stuff at every time. I, I'm pretty smart, but I, I just can't, I, I can't be in a black person's shoes, and I just have to, in order to understand better what's going on, I need to hear more and talk more and listen a lot more. In 2008, Dr. Shelley Tekluk understood that need and penned Witnessing Whiteness, her how-to guide on anti-racism. This was born out of this idea of wanting to to help myself and then therefore help other people to know all those nooks and crannies of how racist conditioning has gotten into us so that we can actually recognize it, stop it, name it when it's happening in front of us and do something to move us toward justice. Sounds like this is a form of lifelong therapy. It is. This is absolutely a healing journey. <laughs> Undoing the 400-year momentum of systemic racism won't be easy, but these Americans, including Mary Dinsmore, are committed. You're doing like the internal work of white anti-racism work is something that um, I'm just going to need to be doing my whole life, and hopefully, if enough of us, um, you know, do it, it can it can make a bigger change, so we can make bigger systemic change, like what we really need. Mary Ferguson said the group paused sessions when the outbreak started, but this week they started those talks back up again via Zoom. I asked Dr. Shelley how someone would begin such a hard conversation with a loved one or a friend. She told me you start with an invitation, not finger pointing. Dana? Michelle, I'm so glad I'm so glad you revisited them. We a couple weeks ago, this was I said to you, I didn't have the words. I didn't even know how to ask the questions. And so to see some of this is eye-opening for so many of us. You know, we we have to be uncomfortable maybe to figure some of this out. Yeah, being uncomfortable, it's uh, it's not easy, but it's well worth it.